You're listening to the summary of the interview. For a link to the full-length episode, please check the description below. Welcome to another episode of Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, a podcast show where I talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why my focus on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land, grow our food and what we eat. And it's time that we as investors, big and small and consumers, start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. Before we get started, I've been recording these interviews next to my day job and I will definitely continue to do so and release about an episode a month. But at the same time, I would love to take this further, share more interviews. There are many more stories to share on investing in regenerative food and agriculture. More depth, improve the quality, maybe even doing some video series. So I started a Patreon community, which makes it easy to support creators like myself. If these podcasts have been of value to you, and if you have the means, I invite you to support me and make this happen. For more information, please find the link to my Patreon account in the description below. And now, without further ado, the interview. Enjoy! Welcome to a new episode. I'm Koen Vasayen, your host. And today I interview Paul Chatterton, founder of the Landscape Finance Lab, an experimental unit inside the World Wildlife Fund. They incubate sustainable landscapes and structure, launch and fund deals at landscape scale. The Landscape Finance Lab was set up three years ago. Uh, in WWF, we've, we've been successful at winning many battles, but you know that, that war is absolutely being lost. The, the, there are half as many animals on this planet now in the wild as there were when I was born 50 years ago. Uh, it's a disaster. And the tools we have at the moment are, are not up to the up to the challenge. We need to change the whole way that we're working if we're going to to save nature, and we need to shift whole economies to to uh, to being green and and supporting uh, sustainability. How do we do pro- programs to, to to save nature and and promote green economy at the scale of a million hectares, a hundred million dollars investment? Uh, dealing with a, with with a million tons of traded goods, uh, a million people, we've got to be able to operate at that scale as a nature conservation organisation if we're going to save nature. But the planet needs that as well if we're going to to reach the SDGs, the global goals. That's actually the, the real beauty of the landscape approach. You know, the when you're looking, when you're dealing with with small issues, you know. The, a logging operation or a farm and uh, and sustainability issues then uh, over a short time frame in a small space you end up with conflict you've got very little room to move between the players with a landscape program you can all take a breath because you can think about landscape you have to think about landscapes over at least a 10-year period ideally a generation or more uh, you, you've got to think about them over a much larger space, which then gives you all the ability to to be more creative, to move move operations over time rather than immediately, to uh, to restore uh, forests or or water flows or whatever. Um, so the important principle is that you know the landscapes have to have to build themselves. The people in the landscapes have to already be very organized and, and ready to go on to the next stage. Uh, so we we have a, an online platform. People um, fill out details, just some basic details about where, where they're up to. They need to show that they've, uh, they've got the scale. If anyone can, can kick off a landscape program, the fundamental principle, though, is that they then have to form a multi-stakeholder partnership, a group of people who want to solve a problem in that landscape. Uh, they go through a process of, of uh, ident- understanding the landscape better and the problem and each other, and, and then they develop a, a collaborative plan to address the problem. It's quite quite simple, and then we help them uh, with that and with uh, with with getting the financing for the individual activities to to address the problem. 
uh, and that might be grant financing, it might be carbon financing, or more you know, more recently where uh, we're, we're starting to show the ability to bring in private financing in, into areas. Basically, Fiji is, is killing its own um, reef, not only because of we're all polluting way too much and, and the temperature in the ocean and acidity is going up, but also because of the runoffs of their farms on, on the islands, right? Nutrients, uh, the, the pesticides and fertilizers poison the reefs, the silt from, from uh, housing developments, the, the poo from the tourists, the tourists come are, uh, are destroying what they come to see, in fact. Uh, so how do we shift that around? We, um, we helped you know, 15 organizations, so four government departments, uh, a number of NGOs, industry groups, banks, to put together a $115 million call for saving the reefs of Fiji, and, and that involved it shifting over to organic agriculture, um, shifting uh, to sustainable fisheries, and restoring the mangrove forest and the river forests uh, and, and dealing with waste management. And uh, we're now developing a $30 million public sector funding program with the Fijian government. For us, it's been, it's been understanding how businesses work and what bankers need to invest in good businesses. Um, the last year has been a really dramatic learning curve for us, listening to, to bankers, shadowing them, um, understanding what they would invest in and, and wouldn't, and then working with the businesses to see from their side whether that sort of thing makes sense and whether they can, uh, they can deliver impact. Um, we're just starting, we're, we're learning learning day by day it's it's really really quite exciting but i think one of the one of the key lessons we learned is that you know, our best friends are the the local banks and local financial institutions the fiji development bank the fiji reserve bank uh anz bank in fiji they um, have been very very useful uh, and supportive players uh, we didn't realize how excited they'd get by this uh, and, and, and how valuable it would be for them as well. Right from the first day, that's our, our principle is landscapes first. The, the team on the ground leads it. We provide some support and coaching, but it's they make the decisions and our goal is to help them to get the resources to build this slowly and steadily until they've got a hundred million dollars uh, between them to, to really shift the needle to change change what's happening in their landscapes and i think that's a that's a big shift because most of the um the world is run from new york and geneva and frankfurt uh, the money goes out it's it's brought out by people from those countries who do work with locals and then the the, the profit and control goes back uh, if we can put the finance and the control in the hands of the people in the landscape, but they've got a, they've got an incentive to look after their own their own home, much more than the people on the other side of the world do. Well, the, the advantage of the landscape approach we're finding is that it, you know, it it gives you all of the stakeholders you want to talk to. If you're a business, you don't have to do that work yourself. It gives you a set of very clear and simple SDG targets that you can work towards um, and monitoring systems to, to measure those so you don't have to do that yourself. It helps with the regulatory um, questions that you have as a business in, in you know, doing fish farming or, uh, or uh, growing ginger and turmeric or whatever it might, might be that you're growing. And it gives you a, um, you know, a bigger goal that you can contribute to. So our theory is that if you can if you can save and sustainably manage a hundred landscapes, if you can get them to the point where they meet the SDG goals, then then you meet the SDGs on the planet. And uh, you know our costings at the moment for building a landscape program and getting investment is somewhere between a hundred million and a billion dollars per landscape. So that's more expensive than a fighter jet, but cheaper than an aircraft carrier. And uh, there's no reason why the, um, the world couldn't find, find that money. 
we have to we have to now build the machinery to actually deliver deliver on that vision and that's what we're doing with the landscape finance lab and our many partners just listen to the summary of the interview for the full-length interview please find the link in the description below if you found the investing in regenerative agriculture and food podcast valuable there are a few simple ways you can use to support it number one rate and review the podcast on your podcast app that's the best way for other listeners to find the podcast and it only takes a few seconds number two share this podcast on social media or email it to your friends and colleagues number three If this podcast has been of value to you, and if you have the means, please join my Patreon community to help grow this platform and allow me to take it further. You can find all the details on patreon.com slash regenerative agriculture or in the description below. Thank you so much and see you at the next podcast.